This is not a new accessory for your Nintendo Switch, despite uh, what the color scheme would lead you to believe. They knew what they were doing. This is actually a new LiPo charger, the SkyRC B6 Neo, and today we're going to be taking a look at it. I'm Joshua Bardwell. You're going to learn something today. What makes this charger so interesting is, first of all, the size. It is really small. Uh, this is great for just tossing into a bag somewhere to take with you to charge packs. It has 200 watts of output power when you power it from a DC input. So it's got an XT60 here and it can take a DC input from your car's 12 volt uh, electrical system or from a field charging pack of some kind. Of course, you could also plug it into a power supply that plugs into the wall in your home. But I'm going to guess that most people are shopping for something this size more for portable uses. In addition to that, it has a USB USB-C connector, and if you have a USB PD capable power source, it can achieve up to 80 watts of charging power just off of USB-C. So when I plug in here, uh, we'll get a nice little warning here, never use the charger on supervised LiPo safety. And then if we press the button here, we can see USB-C PD input, 65 watts of power. 65 watts is all my current power supply is capable of providing, but if I had a higher wattage power supply, the charger could take up to 80 watts. So let's go ahead and plug in a battery and let's start a charge cycle. And the charger can do up to 6S. So if you're on that new 8S hype train, this isn't gonna be the one for you. And if we just push the button, we can see here the current uh, state of charge of the battery and battery type lipo 6s balance charge uh, I always like to balance charge to 4.21 volts Just because sometimes if you charge to 4.2 when it actually finishes charging, it's not quite at 4.2 It's like at 4.19. I don't know. Uh, so I always charge to 4.21 and start Away we go Battery type supported by the b6 neo R lithium polymer Lithium ion, which basically is going to be the same as lithium polymer, but with a lower cutoff of voltage of only 4.1 volts. Bear in mind that many cells today that are sold as lithium ion, like many 18650 cells that you'll see, actually are designed to be charged to 4.2 volts. So don't let the fact that it's an 18650 cell make you think that you can't charge it all the way up. Check what the manufacturer says. You may be charging many lithium ion cells as uh, the LiPo program here in the chart. Uh, lithium iron phosphate, if you've got any of those, and LIHV uh, high volt lithiums that charge up to 4.35 volts. As well, it can do nickel metal hydride and nickel cadmium and lead, but I think that most people buying this charger aren't using it for that. The programs that the B6 Neo supports are balance charge, charge, which presumably is like a fast charge program where it doesn't balance at the end. You should always balance charge pretty much always, just don't use the charge. Storage, which takes them down to 3.8 volts for storage, and discharge, uh, which takes them down to 3.3 volts. So that discharge program is not going to like fully kill down to zero volts a defective battery. You'd need something else to do that. And as far as the charge current goes, we can crank that thing. Oh, well, it's weird that plus, that's backwards, I see. It's a little backwards. I would think that plus would make the amps go up. Let's see how far we can go here. Let's just set this sucker at 10 amps. It's not gonna hit 10 amps because the power supply can only do uh, whatever, 65 watts, and that would be too many watts, I suspect, but let's find out. 6S battery at 10 amps, here we go. And we will cap out, oh, 51 watts, 52 watts. Oh, well, we're not even hitting 65 watts. Maybe that power supply isn't being super honest about its rating. Now we're capping out at about 50 watts and two amps. We could then extrapolate that if we had a DC input, we would be getting 200 watts and about eight amps. Um, so we can do, Let's see, this is about a, this is a, a 1800 or 1600 milliamp hour pack. So we're doing uh, not quite 2C, a little over 1C. Um, this isn't going to be like, if you normally charge your batteries at 4 or 5C because you like to live on the edge, this charger isn't going to do that for you, at least not on the USB input. On the other hand, if I take a LiPo battery as a DC power source and plug it in, and 
I understand you guys are saying we're just charging from one LiPo battery to the other. That's dumb. This is just a demonstration. Well, let's see what I get. Did it remember my setting? It did. 10 amps. Fantastic. Here we go. And we should hit 200 watts here. Yeah, there she goes. There she goes. Oh, yeah. Oh. Oh, no, I killed my battery. I have to charge this. This wasn't a fully charged battery. It was just about to hit 200 watts, though. It sure was. <laughs> if I hold down the Enter key, it'll take me into the settings menu, and we can take a look at what we've got there. There is a safety timer, so the charger will cut off if the charge cycle goes on past this time. Uh, max capacity, the charger will cut off if it puts more than this number of milliamp hours into the battery. One of the ways that a battery can fail is uh, that it will just keep soaking current from the charger, but the voltage doesn't go up and it turns that current into heat and then eventually the battery overheats and blows up. So uh, one of the ways you can detect a bad battery is if too much current is going into it from the si what the size of the battery should allow. And that is the purpose of that setting. Trickle charge and holding voltage. That's interesting. Holding voltage means that after the charge cycle is done, there'll be just a little bit of a parasitic drain on the battery. And if you leave the battery plugged into the charger, it will come back down from full charge. Holding voltage means that the charger will just periodically just keep the battery at full charge. I'm not sure what trickle charge is. Uh, minimum input voltage to keep you from killing your battery. LCD backlight. I'm gonna turn that up. Oh, very nice. Volume, we'll turn that off because I don't like beeping. Stop beeping. Oh, thank God. DC power. These are DC power limits? Oh, DC power. It can, shut up. It can act as a DC power supply. That's pretty slick. I didn't know that was in here. So what this will let you do is you'd, you would need an XT60 uh, plug to like a barrel jack or something, but it'll actually output DC power of any voltage you want. Let's see, what's the max? How high will it go? How low, oh, Freaking again, the arrows are backwards. Five volts up to, will it step up? Wow, oh wow, 27 volts, wow. So it'll output DC voltage. You'd have to make your own little XT60 to whatever plug you prefer uh, cable, but it'll act as a power supply. That's really slick. Oh, and it's even got a current limit, nice. Battery meter, okay. We use it as a battery checker. It's kind of silly as a battery checker because you have to like hold down the menu and then scroll through the menu. And usually with a battery checker, you just want to pull it out, plug it in, check your battery and go. But I guess it's nice that it's there. Wait a minute. If I press the up arrow, milliohms, shut up. Will it do internal resistance testing? Shut up. Do it. Do it. What if I push this button? Checking. <gasps> it will. It's an internal resistance checker. That's nice because a lot of other chargers only test the internal resistance during the charge cycle. So if you just got a battery and you want to measure the IR, you have to start a charge cycle. And what I always do is I charge the battery to 4.20 volts, let the charge cycle finish, and then start a new charge cycle at 4.21 volts, and then it'll measure the internal resistance, but it's kind of annoying. You want to just be able to plug a battery in and boom, measure the internal resistance. That's pretty nice. Okay, what else do we got? Factory reset. System info, system upgrade, firmware upgrade. Nice. That's way more than I thought I was going to get when I started this review. Like, I thought this was going to be a 200 watt charger for 35 bucks with the potential to use USB PD. If you have a USB power supply, that alone would like be like worth buying for a lot of people. But now you've got all these additional functions that they didn't really have to put in. That's pretty impressive. The only thing I guess I wonder, like SkyRC, who's SkyRC? Like ISDT, I know. Toolkit RC, I know. Uh, SkyRC has actually been around for a while. I used to have the SkyRC Quattro, their four channel charger that I used with my battery test kit. It was pretty solid for me and I had a good impression of it. I've kind of never understood why SkyRC isn't more popular in the FPV world. This is a really cute, inexpensive, pretty capable charger. If you're interested in taking a punt on it, there are links in the video description below to where you can pick it up. And uh, in case you don't know the spiel by now, they are affiliate links. So click that link, make a purchase. I get a little bit of a kickback. It means a lot when you do that. Um, where should you go from here? Number one, 
200 watts, 80 watts, what does that actually freaking mean in terms of how fast you can charge your batteries? I've got a video about that. It involves a spreadsheet. I'm gonna put a card on screen and a link in the video description to where you can check that out. In addition, I wanna show you the Hobbymate S6, which is one of the most full-featured chargers. It's sort of like the other end of the spectrum from this little inexpensive one. I still think it's a really good value and I think you should check it out. Card on screen and link in the video description below. I'll see you there.